uh, thanks again, everyone, for uh, just joining on board here. It's, these weeks are going fast, and um, so this is the Advent Week 3, and we're focusing on joy. And I was blessed as I was gone Sunday and was with family down in California. It was great to hear Doug's. I got to hear Doug's message on joy and appreciated that. And so we'll just give a, I'll give a short just reflection on that as well tonight. But let's light our candles. So mine are behind me here. So we're going to light the first one. We have hope and peace and joy. So however you have arranged your advent wreath or if you have other candles or whatnot too. Um, there they are. Uh oh, I'm going to relight. Sometimes we have uh, trouble keeping our hope going. <laughs> so I'm going to try that again. All right. So my lovely assistant, Sarah, is going to get hope going for us. <laughs> I hope I can get the hope candle burning in a moment here. So um, with that, let me uh, uh, again open with the time of prayer, just thinking again, the hope, the peace, the joy that Jesus has brought us. And uh, thank you again to all of you for being here. Thanks, Mike, for leading us in a song here, or two or three in a few minutes here. And uh, let's pray. Dear Lord, we thank you for uh, being our hope, being our peace, being our joy. And as we uh, continue into this Advent season, Jesus, come. And we pray that you would come to each of our hearts, uh, to each of our families, our church, our community, our world. And uh, thank you, Lord, that you're here with us and that we can have our joy restored every Every day, every moment, as we look to you, no matter what our outward circumstances might be. So bless our time together as we uh, sing, as we uh, talk together, as we reflect on your word. In Jesus' name, amen. All right. amen. Thanks again, Mike. Thanks yeah, for being with thanks, us. Pastor John. So uh, I want you guys to be singing as loud as you possibly can. We're going to sing some joyful Christmas carols this evening. And the first one, we just have to start with it because, you know, it says joy in it. Let's sing it together. Here we go. Joy to the world, the Lord is come. Let earth receive her King. Let every heart prepare him room And heaven and nature sing And heaven and nature sing And heaven and heaven and nature sing Here we go! Joy to the earth, the Savior reigns let all their songs employ While fields and floods, rocks, hills and plains Repeat the sounding joy, repeat the sounding joy Repeat, repeat the sounding joy Here we go! with truth and grace and makes the nations prove the glories of his righteousness and wonders of his love and wonders of his love and wonders wonders of his love Welcome back again to our third Advent night, and it's great to be with you and with our Community of Hope family in this way, and uh, always a special time uh, to be together, and I think it's even more meaningful, isn't it, to see each other uh, in a week where maybe you've had a chance to see each other at, at church on Sunday, or maybe not, maybe you're viewing online, 
But uh, however we're connected, we are connected together in Jesus, and that's a good thing. And so again, glad that we're here together and focused on this theme of joy. So just a reminder, as we're lighting these candles, and you can see my little Advent Yule log here, we have hope was resurrected. Amen to that. Okay, so we have hope. Our hope is back. Uh, so we have uh, hope, peace, joy, and then uh, this Sunday, and again next Wednesday too, we'll focus on the theme of love. And then finally on Christmas Eve, we'll light that candle, the Christ candle, as we uh, celebrate Jesus coming. And so um, the theme tonight is joy. And I've got a couple thoughts that I'll share with you about joy that I've been thinking about and a couple of Bible verses as we uh, think on this theme. But, um, you know, one of the, I don't know how this came to me. I, I've really never seen her show, but there's a, there's a, a person called uh, Marie Kondo. Anybody ever heard of Marie Kondo? Okay. And uh, you might remember, okay, those of you that are aware of her and what she does, uh, and those of you that aren't, I'm just going to just re just remember what, what she's about. But a lot of people uh, clutter up their lives with a lot of stuff, right? Anybody, anybody have a garage that's full of stuff? <laughs> I won't say junk. I won't say bad stuff. I'll just say stuff, right? And uh, it's interesting, you know, many people have their garage not as a place for their cars, but as a place for their stuff. Okay, well, she speaks about all the things that we have that we accumulate to place them all on the floor and touch them one by one. And as you touch these items, she instructs people that have a cluttered life of all kinds of stuff. If an item doesn't spark joy <laughs> when it's touched uh the person should do this here's what she says she should thank it for being a part of his life or her life and then donate it or trash it <laughs> so if it doesn't spark joy what get rid of it either give it away or throw it away and so it's just interesting and this uh this this uh, book in her books this theme spark joy it's a loose translation of the Japanese word uh, tokemeku, or literally, which means joy means to flutter, to throb, to palpitate, to beat fast, as your heart would when it feels excited. Okay, so I don't know. I haven't uh, practiced this little art from uh, Marie Kondo, I gotta confess, but uh, it has a good good, rim, good uh, ring to it. And, right, we gotta get rid of stuff that we don't really need and give it away, and maybe it'll bless somebody else. But I want to get to this word joy again, and uh, thinking about that definition, that was an interesting definition, uh, the Japanese word, what, to, when it makes uh, to your heart, or uh, to flutter, to throb, to palpitate, to beat fast, being excited, and it just stirred me back to this word, and uh, this is what one of the verses that Doug highlighted last Sunday, and I wanted to bring back from uh, Luke 2. I'm going to start with about verse 8, thinking again about the joy of this encounter with the shepherds and the angels. And we read, there were shepherds, Luke 2, verse 8, there were shepherds living out in the fields nearby, keeping watch over their flocks at night. An angel of the Lord appeared to them. The glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. So that's kind of a, that's a different thing from joy. But the angel said to them, do not be afraid. I, tell, I bring you good news of great joy that will be for all the people. Today in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is Christ the Lord. He is Christ the Lord. And again, that great news, I bring you good news of great joy. And as they heard this, they responded. And as, as I think about this, um, again, there's a lot of things in our lives that, um, I don't know, that um, lead us outside of joy. And, um, and even, even the Christmas season uh, for some, and I know this year is very different, but I, th I still think it, there's a lot of expectations that we have that we're probably, okay, they're, they're different this year, but yet, uh, you know, whether it's the, 
instead of joy, we panic because I've, I've got things to do before Christmas, whether it's shopping or other things, or it's um, frustration over activities. And again, of different things that are going on. I think that's a little different this year. Um, maybe you just have expectations that are not there that you that you're expecting certain things normally at Christmas and now uh, things are heavy things are closed and there's the joy is just seems far far away and um, you know we sing songs like joy to the world the Lord has come and that should be our focus of our joy and I would like to, uh, the Lord has come, the Lord is here. And I'd like to read another verse. And um, I forgot to mention, but if you'd like to look at it um, from, uh, from the Psalms. And this is um, um, a verse from Psalm 13 um, and verses 5 and 6. And I forgot to mention, I don't know if you have that in the chat section, but if you'd like to like to read that, you can look at it with me, or you can just listen to it. So you see there, and the, if you're looking on there, you can see the, the verses that I just read from Luke 2, and then from Psalm 13, verses 5 and 6. And if you're, if you're able to look on with that, if you're in that group chat, you can... Why don't you read it with me? I'll read again from Psalm 13, 5 and 6, and just read these verses with me. But I trust in your unfailing love. My heart rejoices in your salvation. I will sing the Lord's praise, for he has been good to me. And that is a, a great verse just discovered that uh, reminds us again of the, the gift God offers us in spite of any external circumstances that uh, come and go, that deep, deep joy. And, and to trust, again, that, that reminder that, uh, um, that that gift of salvation that God offers, and we see that clearly when uh, God entered the world in Jesus that became a baby and to be the Savior of the world, and how we can have you know, joy that's beyond any external circumstances. The shepherds were not living in, in good circumstances, but they had joy in their hearts because the news of a Savior had come to them. And uh, all the ups and downs, the roller coaster of emotions, even even death itself. And I, I you know, as I shared even last uh, Wednesday, and, and you've heard me talk about, you know, even the loss of, of life as Sarah's mom uh, passed away. But I can tell you truly that there was joy in the gathering uh, uh, celebrating uh, Sarah's mom, Barbara's life, because of the eternal hope of heaven that she is experiencing even now, and that is ours through Christ, that we can have joy. And there was, there was sadness, but there was joy in the, in the gathering and uh, the family that met together. And so uh, think on this as we uh, think about joy. Um, uh, Words exalt, uh, want this word exalt actually literally means leap for joy, okay, exalting in something, and con connected with a triumph. You see that in in sports stadiums, right? When there's a victory, people are jumping up and down, and they're high-fiving, or they're just, you know, going out of their minds, being, being happy. Well, think about this. It's something to be happy about. Through Jesus' birth, death, resurrection, he triumphed over death. And we don't have to fear the future because of, of, of Christmas, of this gift of God and Jesus. And as we respond to the gospel, as we receive the Lord, this good news that Jesus offers us, we can experience victory uh, over the grave and be with God forever. And if there ever was a reason to rejoice, <laughs> it's in this. And I know that for us believers, as we, we rejoice, even in the midst of the hardest times, because we have a Savior. And... And so uh, I don't know what the heaviness of Christmas is for you these days, whether it's the difference of last year or previous years or our family having to be distanced from one another. I, I think of even my own parents and the, the challenges with their health that they're going through. It's, I don't know if I'm even going to be able to be together, even though they're only an hour away. Um, it's going to be hard to even be together. 
but uh, these are external, these are earthly circumstances. But uh, again, where do I want to focus my mind and my heart? On the joy that Jesus brings. And uh, all these other external things of dinners and gifts and um, homemade fruitcake, <laughs> right? Whatever that thing is of the earthly things of Christmas, uh, maybe it's going to be a time even now that centers us. Jesus, you bring true joy uh, more than any any, even any physical gathering and even any gift and you somehow some dinner together, whatever our experiences are, Jesus, our joy is found in you. And so I'd like to, I'd like to pray. And if there are any prayer requests that you have too personally, you can sure sh share those in the, in the group chat right now. But I just like to pray a, just a general prayer of blessing um, over you as we think about again, what Jesus gives uh, life is found in his name, and that joy can be ours, either for the first time or that joy can be restored in spite of any external uh, circumstances that you're facing or just disappointments of, uh, again, Thanksgiving, Christmas, these key holiday times and how they're so, so different. But may your joy, the joy that is found in Jesus, be restored as we pray, as we, as we lift up the name of our Lord. So let's bow our heads and hearts as we pray. Lord, we pray that during this time and during this Advent and Christmas season, we would be focused on the incredible gift of salvation in Jesus, so the source of all joy in this life and in the life to come. So I thank you, Lord, for these uh, brothers and sisters united in faith as we come uh, just uh, seeing one another and uh praying together, singing your praises, laughing together, just sharing with one another. Lord, you're at the center. Uh, you're here with us. And in spite of any loss, in spite of any frustration, in spite of any things the world brings uh, that, uh, that cause us in, in earthly terms to lose our joy, may our joy be recentered upon you each day, each moment. And uh, may we find strength and hope in that. So, Lord, thank you again. Thank you for these ways that we can uh, celebrate your love and recognize again the hope, the peace, the joy, and the love that you have come to bring. So guide our hearts, guide our thoughts, and thank you again for being with us. It's in your holy name we pray. Amen.